It was a mission that was supposed to last about a week. Instead, astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams spent nine months in space, but after so much planning and calculations, the pair returned home along with two other astronauts a little earlier this evening. And splashdown, Crew 9 back on Earth. Once again, some elation and cheers there from Butch Wilmore. Technically perfect, picture perfect. The SpaceX capsule splashing down off the Florida coast after leaving the space station nearly uh, six hours uh, before Sonny Williams, uh, or sorry, Wilmore and Williams were supposed to return last June. Uh, but their new Boeing Starliner crew capsule ended up having several issues once they reached the ISS and a return flight on the capsule was deemed too risky. Attempts to bring them back sooner were canceled due to a slew of technical problems. So months after their expected return, Sarah and Darius have been watching this for us. And, and we were listening to the questions and answers with the NASA crew. This is history in the making. I mean, every space mission mm -hmm. is, but one of the historic things here wasn't the delay. They've actually been longer delays. It was the fact that there were two commercial operations involved in transporting those astronauts to the space station and back again, two different ones, mm. because there was a technical problem, and uh, that's something that uh, that they talked about. Yeah, well, one one brought them up, yep. and the other brought them down, yep. because Boeing wasn't uh, able, and so uh, what we had was a SpaceX a capsule bringing them down, a 17-hour journey, uh, landing picture perfect landing. Mm -hmm. I mean, met by dolphins in the ocean. So you couldn't have asked for anything better if you were any kind of a company trying to promote yourself. But what you heard in that press conference, though, a, a number of times the those uh, the NASA personnel at almost at pains to point out that there are two, that they are still committed to Boeing as well. And also talking about Boeing's, uh, you know, uh, interest and in investment in, in this landing going well. They sent these astronauts up. They wanted to make sure that it went well. They had a watch party, actually, uh, watching as this was all happening uh, and working with NASA. And NASA saying, uh, you know, we're still working with Boeing. It's very important that there be two because, and you heard them say this, uh, who knows, it, next time it might be SpaceX that sends them up and, uh, and Boeing has to bring them back down. Which is, as you point out, that's not you saying that. That's the NASA official. He mentioned mm -hmm. it twice in the news conference. You wonder how the people at SpaceX felt about that, you know, because obviously there's a lot of uh, I think competition great. I between the two. I think that they work together yeah. well. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, lots of experiments that happened on here, experiments mm -hmm. that those two astronauts weren't actually planning to do on their short mission. Uh, what are some of the, I don't know if you had a chance, Darius, to kind of keep track of some of the things that oh, they did up there. Unsurprisingly, that was, that was one of the things I was most interested in. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, they did a lot of stem cell research. They were, really when you're on the ISS, you become your own test subject. So they're doing a lot of experiments on themselves to monitor the effects of space on humans. They also monitor, uh, monitor the effect of space on plants for any future missions that they need to grow uh, fruit or whatever up there, uh, plants up there. Uh, they uh, also launched the Japan Space Agency, JAXA, their first wooden satellite, which is a, a pretty big breakthrough, and they uh, did several spacewalks. Sunny is now the uh, uh, woman who has spent the most time during space, doing spacewalks up on the ISS and the fourth overall. So mm -hmm. lots of really exciting stuff coming out of the, the mission. Yeah, I, you know, we talked to Robert Thirsk a few minutes ago, a former Canadian astronaut, and so much that was interesting about what he said. One is, quite eloquently, he spoke about how being in space has changed him forever mm -hmm. and how philosophical he was both in the space station looking down at Earth, but since then just thinking about bigger issues than he had before. And the other thing he talked about is is, is just all, like just how, he said actually, terrifying the re-entry to Earth is, right? Yeah. The the G-forces, he said, it's like the biggest roller coaster you've ever been on, I think, you know, to multiply to the order of 10, and it's just constant, uh, more than four Gs, I think, and he says mm -hmm. that there are moments that you get scared. I know both of you, but I'll ask each of you quickly. Sarah, you've, you've been delighted by everything you've seen today. What is it about this mission and this landing that has you so excited? Well, the pictures were just so beautiful. But can mm -hmm. I just say that the moment I liked the most in that press conference was when they thanked the families and acknowledged how it's difficult mm -hmm. it is for those astronauts to be terrified, I'm sure, to some mm -hmm. extent, as they're making that landing. Imagine that you're the daughters of Butch, and you're watching your dad make this landing, knowing all of the things that you just recited mm -hmm. there. That would be very scary. Mm -hmm. Darius? Uh, just 
watching watching the descent, knowing that they were traveling 28,000 kilometers per hour, seven kilometers per second, flying through the atmosphere. The outside of that capsule was 1,600 degrees Celsius. And uh, when they got down on the ground, I mean, anybody would be dizzy after that. But also, you know, losing all that bone density and muscle mass from being up there, it, it's no surprise that when they come out of the shuttle, they immediately go get checked out. And yeah. so we're, we'll look forward to hearing from them once they're out. Always nice talking to you and what a perfect segue to our next guest on the program. <laughs> With the return of Sonny and Butch, scientists are trying to figure out what it will take for them to recover. Dr. Guy Trudell is a space researcher, a medical doctor, a scientist at the Ottawa Hospital Rehabilitation Centre and he joins us from Ottawa. Dr. Trudell, after more than nine months, uh, what impact is this going to have on those two astronauts? Yeah, so the main impact, as was mentioned before, will be on your locomotor system. Your, you, we have all learned through evolution for millions of years of a, of adapt, to adapt to gravity. And now for nine months, there's no gravity. So the effect is, is quite solid on your muscles, muscle mass, but not only muscle mass, muscle strength and endurance. And then on your bones, of course, we calculate the bone loss in percentage per month. So it adds up over nine months. And so take me back to what they would have been going through a few hours ago, a couple of hours ago, when they opened up that capsule and they're taken out and they're, they're back on Earth for the first time in, in more than nine months. How difficult is it for them to do the adaptations you have to do to be back on Earth? Well, the first thing is they'll breathe fresh air. So they all mention that uh, as, as the first... Uh, noticeable change but then they would feel like their whole body is so heavy they, they have difficulty lifting their arms lifting their legs and and that's why you have so many crews uh, at the site to, to make sure that they will transfer from that uh, stretcher to the medical stretcher which is only a foot higher and yet you'll have three persons helping them to do that um, then there will be their balance and their coordination that will be off. As you see them moving in the space station, all their movement is slow and without any gravity. So, so that coordination between uh, your joints and your muscles is, is also affected. So, so you feel heavy, you feel like a, you're weigh, weighing a ton. What sort of things did they do while they were in the space station to try to preserve their health? Yeah, so, so thankfully the space station is fairly large and they were able to, to, to bring a, lo a number of exercise, a uh, small gym there. So you have what you call the A-RED, which allows you to do resistive exercises in order to keep your muscle uh, as strong as they can be. And they also run on the treadmill, uh, but a treadmill uh, to which they're tethered with elastic bands so that you reproduce the shocks on your feet, on your skeleton as well, to try and keep your bone mass. Uh, your calcium on your bones from from fleeing uh, and then and being and being lost, uh, but all of that does not uh, prevent all of the changes uh, when you land. Well, any of the changes, and I think also in terms of both of these astronauts are a little older, maybe than than the first generation of astronauts. Is there a concern that some of the stresses they went through, some of the changes their body went through, might uh, might linger? Yeah, and in, in, in this case also, Ian, they, they were not prepared for that mission. Uh, they were prepared for a seven-day mission. And if you knew you were going for nine months, you will train extra. You will try to bring, to build extra muscle mass, extra bone mass, uh, which they possibly did not uh, do here. Um, the other piece there is that also your, your blood pressure, your fluid distribution is different in space than it is on Earth. Um, and that depends on your nervous system, your arteries. And we know that when you're slightly older, uh, these reflexes may take a longer time to recover. So that means you would be standing if it's uh, very hot, for example, or if you're a bit dehydrated, and you may not be able to mount your blood pressure to, to keep your, your blood pressure to the brain uh, large enough, and you may be prone to, uh, to fainting. So those are, are some of the, uh, the, the issues that can happen. And when you're, older also, when you're also older, your bone mass is, is lower. So a bone, a bone loss when you're older is more significant than when you're younger.
Yeah, sorry, sorry about jumping in there, Dr. Trudeau. One, one last question. I know that your research is on the scientific, the physical impact on astronauts spending time in space. Um, has much research been done on the psychological impact? Because here you have two astronauts who, as we know, weren't expecting to be in space that long, um, who are, you know, in cramped quarters for a long period of time, as Sarah and I were talking about a little bit earlier. Um, and then who knows what else you deal with when you're uh, isolated for that long. So has there been much research done on the psychological on impacts? There is, in fact, uh, I would say almost as much research on the physiological and the psychological effect. And again, in this case, they were unprepared. They were leaving their family for a week and, and they can only come back a month later. Uh, but these were seasoned astronauts. It was their third mission. So they knew about uh, what it is to live away from home in an extreme environment, basically living in a lab environment uh, and away from their family. And they have access to good communication uh, to stay close to their, their loved ones. Dr. Trudel, thank you very much for speaking with us this evening. Really interesting to hear your perspective. My pleasure. Thank you. Former Canadian Space Agency astronaut Robert Thirsk joins us now from our Ottawa studio. Thank you very much for making time for us. Uh, talk first of all about the descent back to Earth. What, what is that like? Uh, hello, Ian. It's a, the return home is a wild and crazy ride. If uh, you can think of the, the best roller coaster that you've ever been on in your life and multiply that by 10, that gives you a little bit of uh, what it's like to uh, return home in a, in a space capsule. There's a lot of G-forces, uh, but different from a roller coaster, these are sustained G-forces for five or 10 minutes at a time. There's a lot of shaking, a vibration, jerking a, a, around, uh, molten plasma streaming by the, the windows. It's a wild and crazy ride. I mean, you say it uh, with a smile on your face and very casually when you go through it for the first time, even though you are a, a person of science and you understand how carefully everything's controlled, but when you go through it the first time, I is it a little bit scary? It is. So uh, a couple of days before my first return in, a, in the Soyuz capsule, one of my veteran crewmates came up to me and said, Bob, during re-entry, there's going to be a moment when you're going to be scared and when you're going to think all of us are going to die. And I was puzzled. I didn't know what he was talking about. But um, yeah, halfway through the reentry, as I just described a, a minute ago, the main parachute came out and we were just swinging back and forth underneath like a yo-yo. I looked over at him and he smiled and he said, yes, this is it. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> And then touchdown, you know, the video that we have today that our audience is seeing of touchdown, it couldn't be more, more beautiful, more artistic almost, but how does it feel inside the capsule when you hit water? Yeah, so I've never had a water landing. I've landed oh. um, on, um, on the ground in the Soyuz mm -hmm. capsule. But uh, yeah, you're right. I watched the, the landing today and it looked like uh, a ballet. It was very artistic. Those are good words to describe it. Um, when you do land, there's still a, a bit of velocity in the capsule, and although it looks like it, it settles down nicely in the water, there's a bit of an impact. It's, it's about a, like a small car crash, but we have shock absorbers and things that, that in our seats that help to protect us, so it's okay. This mission originally planned for, for eight days. It got extended, of course, to nine months, and I've heard various astronauts say, you know, they expect the unexpected, that when you go to space, you, you know that things can, can not go exactly as planned and you could stay on longer. But, but, but again, you having gone through space travel, um, how do you think, it, what do you think it was like for these astronauts to have this, this extended mission in space? Well, you know, astronauts need not only the technical skills to function well in space, robotics, spacewalking, rendezvous, docking, things like that. But we also need to have these innate skills in self-care, self-management, adaptability, flexibility, resilience. We're, we're selected initially to the astronaut program based somewhat on our past experiences with those skills. And then once we become astronauts, we continue to train them. So mm -hmm. I am absolutely sure that Sonny and Butch were considering what uh, could happen if uh, their test flight did not go well. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think they were fully ready for it, and, um, they, and we all saw they did beautifully.